My name is Zach Fong. I'm a program director at RPE. Today, I'm here to discuss an area of interest that we're exploring about hydrogen. Before I start, I would like first thank you for tuning in. I also want to thank my fellow program directors, technical market advisors, and tech seeders for their help and their contributions to put this webinar together. As you may already know, RPE is a special force within the Department of Energy. Our mission is to identify and develop breakthrough concepts and disruptive technologies that can have a transformative impact on energy production, efficiency, and greenhouse gas emissions. One of the areas we're interested in, and I'm here to discuss today, is hydrogen or more specifically, stationary hydrogen storage. However, the real motivation and the overarching goal is about long duration seasonal energy storage. Seasonal energy storage is an enormously important area for deep penetration of renewable power production. And hydrogen is one of the major options to do so which is why I'm here to discuss hydrogen technology today. So this slide captures the essence of the concept of this area of interest. We see a significant opportunity to develop stationary hydrogen storage technologies that could enable seasonal energy storage. Now having a way for seasonal energy storage can have a massive impact on deep penetration of renewable power generation. Now, renewable electricity production is expected to be well above 20% in the US in 2020. However, in order to reach the climate change goal in 2030 and 2050, that number has to get well above 50%, even 90%. Due to the variable nature of the re renewable energy sources, that would require energy storage. Long duration energy storage has to be an integral part of the overall renewable energy system in order to harness the net energy that would otherwise be curtailed and to, to address the fluctuation of energy demand from weeks to weeks and from season to season. So hydrogen, again, hydrogen is one of the main options for uh, energy storage. Hydrogen storage itself is part of the hydrogen energy, uh, hydrogen technology system. Now hydrogen storage is needed wherever hydrogen is produced and wherever hydrogen is used. Methods of hydrogen storage uh, t uh, exist today, but they all have serious drawbacks new technologies are needed. This new technology must be safer, scalable from small scale to very large scale, compact with high energy density, transportable, and it should be deployable anywhere we need it. And lastly, but not least, it needs to be low cost, which is a non-trivial challenge. This slide discusses the need, discusses the need for energy storage. The difference in the energy demand from summer to winter can be as high as 15 to 20 percent of the total energy consumption in the U.S. in any given year. Now that is a lot of energy. For decades, this difference in energy demand between seasons is addressed by storing natural gas. Something like five quarts of BTU of energy worth of natural gas is stored in various forms to deal with this issue. Now, when we talk about energy storage, now people think about lithium ion battery, which is a great technology for energy storage. Lithium ion battery is booming as we speak. However, lithium ion battery is cost competitive only for durations up to a few hours and perhaps up to a hundred hours pending some new technologies. For longer durations, 
other options are needed, such as compressed air energy storage and pumped hydro energy storage. Pumped hydro is the most common approach I use today. However, in order to use pump hydro, you need hydro resource. It's siting limited. Construction of hydro stations, the infrastructure related to it, needs massive long-term financial commitment. Now, hydrogen is another option, a major option. It can play a significant role for large-scale, long-duration energy storage. According to a recent published study by National Renewable Energy Laboratory, for well, durations longer than one week, hydrogen is the lowest cost option compared to pump hydro or compressed air storage. Assuming hydrogen is stored in salt caverns and the cost of hydrogen is as slow as projected in the future. There are many market studies too, trying to find the trends of hydrogen technology development. A recent report by Bloomberg New Energy Frontier they said that they report that the signs that hydrogen is scaling up are emerging. Announced installations of electrolyzers are going through the roof, outpacing the projections that are made in reports just a few months ago. So with the increase of green hydrogen production capacity, one has to ask where all the green hydrogen produced will be stored? Is it all going to be in the high pressure tanks? in a massive quantity, is that safe? Is that the most economical way to do it? Now, hydrogen storage has always been part of the focuses of the Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology Office of the U.S. Department of Energy, including the Hydrogen at Scale Initiative. The Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology Office invested heavily on hydrogen storage in the past two decades. However, almost all that effort focused on onboard hydrogen storage for fuel cell vehicles. And most of that investment were put on high pressure tanks. Less were put on other methods of hydrogen storage. We recognize that the investment and development of stationary hydrogen storage, especially those specifically for seasonal energy storage, have lacked. Therefore, this is a technology gap that presents an opportunity. Now, how is hydrogen stored today? For those of you who already work in this area, nothing on this slide is new. Yes, compressed high pressure tanks. It's flexible, transportable, very easy to use, but it has high capex uh, unit energy basis. It also, more importantly, has safety risks, significant safety risks. Salt caverns is the least cost approach today for large scale hydrogen storage. But it is an option only if you have salt caverns. It is severely siting limited. Construction salt caverns and the infrastructure related to it also need massive financial commitments. Hydrogen can be store, stored as liquid liquid hydrogen, ammonia, liquid organic hydrogen carriers. These liquid forms generally have high energy density, but converting to and back from liquid carries stiff energy penalties. Hydrogen storage in solid materials is an attractive option. It has been the intense focus of the research community for decades because of its potential for onboard hydrogen storage. In contrast, however, there has been little attention to the use of solid materials for hydrogen storage for the purpose of long duration energy storage, which is a technology gap and that we believe holds tremendous potentials. The requirements for solid hydrogen storage are significantly different in some critical aspects compared to onboard hydrogen storage. And these differences present opportunity for success. Now, 
From a power to hydrogen, a hydrogen back to power perspectives, the storage system consists of the water electrolyzer to produce hydrogen, a hydrogen storage tank, and the conversion unit to convert the hydrogen back to electricity. The performance of the system is measured based on the performance of all the major components. The most important metrics are the round trip efficiency and the cost. When we consider the value proposition, we have to consider not only the cost of storage tank and its operations, but also the entire supply chain. We must explore all technology options that meet both technical and cost targets. So here's the summary, the key points. Long duration seasonal energy storage is critical to renewable energy penetration. Hydrogen is one of the ways to do it. Stationary hydrogen storage is a techni technology gap. The challenge is to develop hydrogen storage technologies that meet both technical and cost targets. All right, thanks again for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let us know. We look forward to working with you for hydrogen-enabled, decarbonized future. Thank you.